when are we ever going to learn? You know, I'm sitting here, um, I had a little procedure done this morning and I could not go to church tonight, so I'm kindly at home. Uh, when you're watching this, it'll be the day after, but you know, I'm I'm doing what some people do on Wednesday night. I'm cruising from um, live stream to live stream. I'm going from different church live stream to different church live stream, and, and I rarely get to do that. But you know, something just hit me, and 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 I often I don't get grieved very easily when it comes to what churches do, and I'm talking about churches that are really preaching the Bible and 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 walking with God. I don't get grieved because I know that each church is different. Every church has a different area. Every church has a different group of people that make up the body. But when are we ever going to learn? That's the question that hit me. You know, I cruise these church websites and these these live streams, rather, and I go from place to place and look at all that they're trying to do. And it seems like one thing that we're trying to do right now, um, mid-pandemic, post-pandemic, whatever you want to say, is how can we get these people back? And I've seen everything from, uh, you know, uh, special services or, or um, whatever you want to call it, a festival, whatever you want to say, however you want to, you want to get into it. They're doing everything they can to get people re-engaged with church, and they're, they're, whether it's uh, special food that they're going to offer, whether they're having, uh, if you come and bring this many visitors, we're offering this. And it's just insanity. You know, this reminds me of what it was like pre-COVID, back last year and the year before, how we always were in this, and I was just as guilty as anybody, we were always in this rush and always in this mode where we felt like we had to spice it up to keep things, uh, keep people interested in coming to church. And God wiped away all of that fluff. I preached a message in Revival not long ago on what happened to all the fluff. And, you know, through the pandemic and through the COVID and through all this stuff, what God has done is God ripped away everything. He ripped away all of our special services. He ripped away all of our um, all of our extracurricular stuff. He ripped away all of the things that we pastors felt the need to do uh, in order to keep people coming. He tore all of that away. And you got to about March and April, people weren't able to go to church anymore. People weren't able to get together. And just like your churches and my church, people just said, we'll do anything. We'll meet in parking lots. And then after the parking lots, they said, if we can just get back inside the church, you know, we don't have to have this special just to be in the presence of one another and in the presence of God. And God single-handedly ripped away all the fluff. And, and here we are. We're coming in, we're, we're getting used to all this stuff, to the uh, post-COVID, whatever you want to call it. And here we are going right back to the same mess. The same I call it carnival Christianity, where we feel like we've got to entertain people in order to get them to come. Fellas, you that pastor churches, I don't know any other way to tell you this, but the majority of people that went away, that left and and don't and did not come back to church. Now there are very, there are some that are at home and they're elderly and they're they're afraid to come because of their health. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about those people that got out of church and are not coming back. Men, the the odds are they were not even born again. And here's here's why. I, I don't know any other political way to put this other than to say that the people that just walked away from church and walked away from God, they were not born again. Now, I'm not talking, now I want to be clear, I'm not talking about those people that are just, they're elderly and they're fearful because of their health and, and all the things that they're, I'm, I'm talking about those people that do everything else but come to church. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those people that have time for everything else, but when it comes to church, that is just too much unless you can draw me back in, unless you can really give me something to entice me. Man, those are goats. They're not sheep. You don't have to entice a sheep to eat grass. A sheep by nature wants good grass, and a child of God by nature wants to be in the fellowship of the saints of God. That's just, I don't know any other way to put that. But here we are, because we worship numbers, and because we worship uh, big crowds, and because we worship all this stuff, and here we are again, we're going to try to kill ourselves over this, and we're going to uh, work ourselves into a frenzy. 
We're going to have to offer festivals and carnivals, and you got to have coffee and donuts, and you got to have all the, 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 the extracurricular stuff, or the people aren't going to come. Jesus said in the book of John, as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He later said in the book of John, he said, if I am lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Now, I know that was a generic lifting when Christ was crucified, but I'm talking right now, I'm talking about the specific drawing power, the Spirit of the living God. Men, the only thing we've got to have in our churches The only thing they have in the Chinese church, the only thing they have in the Korean church, the only thing that they have in churches in closed countries. They can't have festivals. They can't have special services. There's only one thing that they have, and that is the presence and power of the Spirit of the living God. Many of those churches don't even have a physical copy of the Bible. Men, get on your face. Don't you let yourself be drawn back in. Christians, do not let yourself be drawn back in to this non-stop push to entertain goats. The people of God will come to the house of God if the Spirit of God is drawing them to hear the Word of God. You get along with the Father somewhere. You get a word from God. Lay on your face before a holy God and ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to fill your life. Don't spend time out there trying to figure out how you're going to get everybody back in. You get in a secret place, wherever it is. For me, it's in this room. Wherever it is for you, it may be in a church office, it may be in a basement, it may be at your kitchen table, it may be in the the bed of your truck, because that's the only privacy you have in the cab. You get along with God. When are we ever going to learn all we need is Christ the Lord? I've learned my lesson. I refuse to entertain goats. I want to come into where my church is and where the flock of God meets, and I want to worship with them. I want to see the Spirit of God move and work in the lives of His people. I want them to be in love with the Bible, in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. If we have revival services, it's not because it's that time of the year where we've got to have them, but it's because the Holy Ghost of God has said, this is the time. Amen. I'm afraid if this hasn't taught us, we're never going to learn. But as for me, from my house and the church that God gives me to pastor, we're going to do it God's way. 